Hello everyone, my name is uh, Chris Cortez. I was an actor in this uh, short film Limonade, and uh, I, I guess I was also executive producer, since I uh, executive produced everything that was Robot Head Entertainment uh, back then. And uh, welcome to the uh, retrospective uh, 2015 audio commentary to uh, Limonade, which is a movie I did not make, but that is me, and I acted in it. This is a movie that was uh, written and directed by the very great Brian O'Leary, good friend of mine, um, who has gone off to fame and fortune, and this was uh, one of his earlier uh, short films from back in the day. Um, yeah, we made this uh, back in 2007, and i um, just going to give you guys a little bit of my past history knowledge from i guess the pov of a of an actor or what have you um basically the the whole origin of this was after i made band-aid the uh, first short for robot head um i wanted uh brian to do the next one the uh when it came around time for him to do it um because uh, I'd asked him previously, and he was he was interested. So we started kind of breaking a story in together, which I didn't really have any part in that. Brian kind of went off and would come up with ideas and then come back and tell me about them, and I would give him my opinion on them. And I remember one idea that he had that I don't think it got past development was um, he wanted to do, like, a stop-motion animation thing, and I'm like, yes, yes, whatever you want, because I just thought, like, Robot Head should be any type of short film you want to make just do it and that didn't uh happen because uh, i don't know i think brian just kind of kept getting other ideas so he came in with a script at one point and i forgot what the name of the short was but it was kind of like a live action roadrunner wily e. coyote uh type thing um and uh, I remember reading and I told him I, th I thought it was really great, but the, the one thing I was disappointed in was Brian uh, does dialogue so well. And I was like, dude, you do dialogue so well, and, and this um, script doesn't really showcase any of that. And he's like, oh, you want a dialogue-centric story? And I'm like, that would be cool. So he went off and he, he actually um, ended up making the uh, that version uh, of the script, which was uh, Limonade. And... Um, I read it, and uh, I, I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was great. I'm like, dude, let's do it. Uh, and so Brian was in charge of casting, because that's kind of like whoever was directing was in charge of that back then. And uh, I don't think I was his first choice, but eventually I, I took on the role of this character, Greg, and um, I, was, I had just taken, uh, or I was in the process of taking, an intro to acting class, and I'd learned some stuff that I didn't know of from the past and uh i started like doing notes and i was so excited to do this movie <laughs> and um <laughs> so i love the x lax by the way um excellent joke from brian uh so he casted me as this guy greg cohen and when i read the character um i interpreted him as like a really weird strange character which is why i dressed the way i dressed i with the um the scarf or the bandana thing and the weird shirt and you know the glasses on the head all the time and uh my hairstyle is my own i didn't do anything weird there and um uh brian was cool with it but i remember later on he told me dude you know it's funny because i kind of imagined this character and and his friend leon who was played by the way i need to stop for a second and give praise to amir mousewell um, I got to work with him in, in this movie, and, and then later on I got to direct him in Mr. Agent, and he was just fucking amazing. Um, he was just, uh, I think he was last minute, because I think uh, uh, Ho Jose Redondo was supposed to be the, the character. I think it was him, uh, who we actually ended up working with in The Essence of Soul Swapping. But um, last minute, uh, Amir came in, and he just knocked it out of the ballpark not only did he um did he fit in with the group uh so well and just like you know fit in with us and was totally he knew what kind of a humor we were into and stuff like that but he just brought so much to it um to the script from what i had read and uh, i can't speak for brian but i i know for a, i'm pretty sure a hundred almost 99.9 percent .9 sure brian was absolutely pleased with everything amir did and and he loved him very much and uh, it was kind of a shame. I'm talking as if Mir died. He's alive and well and has a beautiful family. But 
<laughs> what's it called? He he moved away very shortly after we did um, uh, Mr. Agent, which was the next short. Um, but yeah, he was a delight to work with. Um, but uh, yeah, this was the first time in a very long time that I uh, was just an actor. I didn't have to worry about uh, directing or... Um, and we had taken those taken those pictures obviously before um, we shot all that. If you notice, I don't even wear the tie later on. Um, but uh, we um, uh, this was the first time I ever really got to do acting and not worry about um, you know anything uh, involving like oh how's the camera going to be set up? How's this going to be? How's that going to be? Didn't have to worry about any of that. A lot of the ad lib lines that I would do, which was actually me fucking up on things, kept in the script. Like the Apu line or a boo or whatever, that was um, me messing up the lines and uh, minute details, me saying minute details, that was something that also was um, stuck in there. And here we have all these cameos. That's Nolo, who would later on appear in um, uh, uh, Roommates as Bo, the first Bo. And. Um, uh, I'm still appearing in other stuff to this day. Um, and there's my wife! Back when we were dating, we were only dating for two years at this time. And I love the smile Amir gives. He's just so, like, delighted to be in this girl's present. I thought it was so cute. Uh, and then here's Lisa. Um, and uh, I think Lara comes out now. That's Brian. That was Brian's ex girlfriend and, and an old friend of ours that uh, we don't really uh, hang out with anymore. And there's John Jen, another old friend of ours. Um, and uh, yeah, this was just um, uh, so great, just being told, hey man, do this, do that, do this, like, let's experiment with this. Uh, and I haven't really uh, done anything like that since, uh, to be honest. This was, I think, the last... Uh... No, I'm sorry, there is uh, the Roommate's Origins, but this was... Um, one of the uh, few times that I can I can count on one hand the number of times I've acted in something that um, was not directed by me or written by me or anything like that, and this is one of them. Uh, this whole thing I thought was so great that Brian did. This was based off of um, the old Apple Steve Jobs R.I.P. I really um, mimicked my tried to mimic my performance after him more like just. Uh, what he would say. I don't really think I did that good of a job. I tried mixing Greg and and Steve and uh, you know, that's just a force to be reckoned with. Also, uh, I remember when we did the wide shots, uh, that was one of the first instances where we were using special effects and I remember there was like a certain boundary I had where I couldn't cross a th certain threshold because it would disrupt the... Uh, you know, I would walk in front of where something was going to be added and I would disappear if that wasn't the case. There's Rebecca looking directly into the camera. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, that was fun to work with. And uh, Brian did all these photographs as well. Uh, I remember he, I would come in uh, and I would, you know, see him kind of like working uh, on like different pieces here and there. Also, I did not mention this, and, and I think it's insane I didn't mention this. So, one of the major concerns in audio, uh, I mean, in, in uh, our movies that we used to make was audio. Uh, people just used to complain we couldn't, uh, they couldn't hear us, they had no idea what we were saying. And so, um, Brian came up with a really great idea and he said, why don't we just dub all of our lines? Because we had really, really uh, great equipment um, with us. And uh, he just thought, like, dude, like we had really great audio equipment from our late night recording studio that, that's now dead. Uh, it's been dead for quite some time. Um, and uh, uh, we would use these, you know, this microphone that we had and all this equipment. And um, Amir and I and all the other actors would come in and redub um, our our voices. We would have to uh, AVR everything that we said in this movie. This movie's a hundred percent. There's no. I don't think there's one line that um, was not uh, redubbed. And um, you know, it was hard because sometimes. Oh, and here. Oh my gosh, I forgot. This is Hota and Brian. Their cameo. This is Brian's cameo in the movie. Um, I believe I was the one who turned on. I was there for this day of shooting. And uh, I was there to help out and operate the camera and whatnot. And uh, Brian just did this really silly accent that I thought was so, like, 
it sounded um, a mix between English and uh, Scottish or something, and I, I just thought it looked really great. And uh, Holta, of course, looks badass as all hell. There is a pickup shot here that it was unfortunate error right here. Yeah, that was an outtake, I think, and we stuck that in there. Holta's um, beard is a little bit more full, and Brian's hair is a lot longer. That was uh, a pickup shot. Lighting's different and everything. And it was... I wasn't there for that pickup shot. That was um, Brian on his own. I think what happened was we just had major problems with uh, the video. Something was happening that he couldn't... Like he lost the video or it wasn't working or something like that. And so I, that was one of the... That was the only day I think that I wasn't there for shooting um, was there. Also, I need to also tip my hat. I think Brian did a great job with the musical choices. And... Um, uh, what's it called? There's Becca. She looks so tired, and the, we all look so pale because of the freaking light. Um, and uh, this kid was amazing. He, uh, we asked him if he wanted to be in the movie, which is kind of weird to ask a random kid, but Brian knew him, and he came over and uh, he did such a great job. And then we put him. He came into our uh, Brian's house where we had the equipment, and I think in one take. He recorded everything. He just did everything here. Now, if you notice, the mirror is missing for these shots. And I think what happened, if I recall correctly, I think he had to leave. And um, so we just recorded, uh, I think Brian recorded his stuff early. And here's Brian's mom makes a cameo. Uh, to this day, Brian still does that. He tries to put us in his movies, um, his newest movie. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it. But... Um, uh, he did have Holta in it, and his dad's in it, and I, I think it's so great to keep the tradition going. And um, all the sound effects, too, by the way, uh, the, the crunching here of the cookies, Brian recorded himself doing the cookies. So any, like I said, any sound effect, audio, anything, except for the music, obviously, was all added in later on, which was phenomenal. Um, but all right, guys, I'm going to go, well, there's water bottle, our tradition. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. This has been Chris Cortez, actor and, uh, I guess executive producer for this short. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take care.